On February 24, 2015, Prime Minister Narendra Modi wrote to 29 chief ministers telling them that the government will accept the 14th Finance Commission recommendations. The report was tabled in Parliament the same day. It increased the devolution of taxes to states from the divisible pool from 32 to 42 percent, a quantum jump in terms of direct transfer to states. Modi said, You will appreciate that following the acceptance of the 14th Finance Commission recommendations, we are moving away from rigid centralized planning, forcing a one-size-fits-all approach on states. States have always been voicing their opposition to this philosophy for years. A bigger room, bigger space, bigger policy space to make their own policies and programs and to um, Im implement what is, what is locally more suitable. So that one size fit all kind of approach is uh, reduced uh, if not eliminated. The opposition welcomed the increase since it gives states more freedom to design and implement development policies without preconditions from either the centre or the planning commission. The increase to the uh, state governments, the share of the central tax, and that is uh, from 32% to 42%, that is a welcome step. Uh, it's better in the sense that tax sharing has been increased and uh, the particle, this devolution, which has been made in the report, uh, it has raised from 32% uh, to 42%. Uh, that's a new step which has been taken by 14th Finance Commission. But all along the states are demanding that there should be 50-50 sharing. The creation of a finance commission every five years or earlier is mandated by Article 280 of the Constitution. It defines the changing financial relations between the centre, the states and also among the states themselves. In January 2013, President Pranam Mukherjee constituted the 14th Finance Commission. Headed by former Reserve Bank Governor Y. V. Reddy, it included four members, former Finance Secretary Sushma Nath, Economist M. Govind Rao, Sudipto Mundle and part-time member Professor Abhijit Sen. Sen gave a dissent note recommending 38% tax devolution to states for the transition period. It was overruled by a majority by the other commission members. Basically, he agrees with all the recommendations, except he said that the transition is required. Suddenly, don't raise it from 38 to 42 for the first year. He said, first year 38, afterwards you should consider 42. Whereas our point of view in the commission is that we cannot take a view how to adjust and all that. That, should, that is a matter which has always been left to the yes, respective governments. So the transition should be a matter of policy management and not the commission award. The Finance Commission recommended by a majority decision 42% as the state's share in union tax revenues. The centre calls it a quantum jump, but opposition parties don't quite agree. All the uh, resources the central government is generating is generating from the states. But unfortunately the states do not have much rights to exploit their own revenues, I mean own resources, which are being collected by the central government. It, there is a point that central government also needs fund, but to what extent? The state said that the union government is transferring money to us for our subjects. Where did the union government get that much money? Because the finance commission has given more money to union. Since the finance commission gave more money to the union, the union is giving it to us. Why are you giving money to the union? Whereas we should get for what we want. We have to do. That's the second. There is a constitutional logic in what they are saying. The Commission consulted both the centre and the states to work out a formula. It kept the total transfer at almost the current level, but gave states more autonomy to spend money from their share in the divisible pool. We recognise that union government has a bigger problem managing the fisc in the next five years, because the starting position is weak compared to the states. Therefore, we protected and we ensured that in our projections, union government has fiscal space for discharging its own functions. Perhaps it was a lot easier for the Commission to divide the money between the centre and the states. The more difficult part, as it turned out, was to divide the money among the states, as they vary hugely in terms of their fiscal condition and their developmental requirements. There will be some states which feel that they have lost out, some states which will feel they have gained. Every Finance Commission, first, the objective conditions change. 
income in, in, income of a state will change the fiscal management will change so even if the same formula is applied even if 13th finance commission formula is applied there will be change in the shares now the new formula includes the population base of 1971 with a weight of 17.5% demographic changes from 1971 to 2001 come next with a weight of 10% area of the state is given 15% Small states are given a flat 2% weight for area as was the case with the 12th finance commission. Forest cover is also been included with a 7.5% weightage. This last point proves to be one of the most contentious decisions. The base basis uh, of or the yardstick uh, which has been decided for distribution of the resources among the states the population criteria the forest cover criteria this is i think uh, it is not acceptable to many of the states for example west bengal bihar uttar pradesh we don't have much forest cover as it was required to get more resources based upon the year stick which has been determined this time therefore this should be reviewed to restructuring the existing pattern uh the distribution among the state they are trying to make a new formula for the distribution of the states even though uh, we should recognize the existing realities and give more help to the backward states also give more help to the forward state to uh, carry forward the uh, attain, uh, attain uh, developments uh, including education sector health sector Commission Chairman Dr. Reddy justifies the inclusion of forest cover. Suppose you have some land or water, you can exploit it for the development. If it is a forest, you are prohibited from exploiting the forest resource because it should be protected in the interest of the nation or the climate. So they have a resource. They have to incur expenditure to maintain the forest, but they cannot use it as a source of development. There is no separate grant for forest maintenance that is also built into the formula. because we wanted to have the dominance of the formula so this is the only way the disabilities have to be captured the maximum 50% weightage is given to income distance this is computed by calculating difference between the average of each state's per capita gdp during 2010-11 to 2012-13 with the state that had the highest per capita gdp in the same period This time the commission separately calculated the share of states in service tax since it is not collected in Jammu and Kashmir. Under the new formula the share for all other taxes collected by the center works out to be Andhra Pradesh 4.305%, Arunachal Pradesh 1.370, Assam 3.311, Bihar 9.665 Chhattisgarh 3.080, Goa 0.378, Gujarat 3.084, Haryana 1.084, Himachal Pradesh 0.713, Jammu and Kashmir 1.854, Jharkhand 3.139, Karnataka 4.713, Kerala 2.500, Madhya Pradesh 7.548, Maharashtra 5.521. Manipur 0.617, Meghalaya 0.642, Mizoram 0.460, Nagaland 0.498, Odisha 4.642, Punjab 1.577, Rajasthan 5.495, Sikkim 0.367, Tamil Nadu 4.023, Telangana 2.437, Tripura 0.642. Uttar Pradesh 17.959, Uttarakhand 1.052, and West Bengal 7.324. As expected, the formula causes heartburn since it brought down the share of some states. The biggest losers turn out to be the most populous ones. The share of Uttar Pradesh came down from 19.677% under the 13th Finance Commission to 17.959%. this formula which has been adopted uh, by the 14th finance commission is too simplistic because there should have been more and more uh, assessment of the ground realities if by taking into account the new formulas a big st biggest state in india like up is deprived then it is unfortunate
One of the most backward states, Bihar, had its share reduced from 10.917% to 9.665%. Bihar gets nearly 30% central assistance under the Backward Region Grant Fund. In his dissent note, Professor Sen highlighted that the 14th Finance Commission abolished the special category for the backward states. He also expressed concern that Bihar is not one of the states that will get grants in aid to deal with projected revenue loss as given to 11 other states. In all, the share of nine states has come down in percentage terms compared to what the 13th Finance Commission gave them. They include Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Bihar, Himachal Pradesh, Odisha, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. This government has taken credit that the 14th Finance Commission ke jo bhi recommendation se aapne accept kar liya hai. To aapne kaha ki 3,82,216 crores se bada ke aapne 5,23 crores or 958 crores aapne states ko de diye sir alag se. Lekin reduction in the plan transfer sir. Pehle plans ke dwara states ko 3 lakh 30,000 crore, 764 crore milte te. Now you have reduced it to, sir, 1,96,743 crore. So now ultimately, the transfer as a percentage of the gross tax revenue, sir, in fact decreased marginally, sir, from 58.04% to 57.21%. That means net up dekoge, to bilkul bhi kisi state ko ek bhi rupiah zada nahi milne wala. We are considering all these factors, this budget and in reading with the Finance Commission report, the central aid and assistance to the state government is drastically decreasing. This is totally against the federal structure of the constitution. And this is never expected from a government which is continuously propagating for a new country concept of cooperative federalism. The center has already said that due to legal obligations and their importance, it will fully support 31 schemes including the Mahatma Gandhi Narega. But changing the funding pattern of 24 other schemes has become a bone of contention. The main reason for this, they are hand over the responsibility of the so-called central sponsored schemes to the hands of the shoulders of the state governments. Eight schemes they have decided to discontinue, 24 schemes they have changed the pat sharing pattern of the funds and other things they are not ready to share the revenue expenditure, the recurring expenditure of this project. While we are taking to the uh, rural health mission program, uh, then the government is not ready to give the salaries. Earlier the government, the central government did it. Now they are not ready for this. Then these type of things also there. I am saying 14th is not giving us more. So this propaganda of we are giving more money to the states is definitely not right, sir. Because you are one hand, sir. You are giving both hands, sir. Because in this particular year, sir, 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 because in this particular year, and some B category, C category um, uh, projects are there, whereby the central government has reduced its contribution and in some cases, central government stopped its contribution. If the states want to go ahead with the C category uh, projects, then the states will have to pay from its own resources. The center also discontinued eight C category schemes. Since the funds earmarked for them are now included in the 42% tax devolution to states, these schemes are the National e Governance Plan, Backward Regions Grant Funds, Modernization of Police Forces, Rajiv Gandhi Panchayat Sashakti Karan Abhiyan, Scheme for Central Assistance to the States for Developing Export Infrastructure, Scheme for Setting Up of 6,000 Model Schools, National Mission on Food Processing and tourist infrastructure. Transfer the schemes to the states. We have transferred the 42% yeah, but without and yet kept most schemes with the center and are funding the schemes also. The states, however, resent the decision to discontinue these schemes. Earlier, it was 6.2% last year, 6.2% of GDP to the total transfer to the state governments. In this budget, it is only 5.9%. They are propagating this cooperative federalism. They are propagating we are giving more money to the state governments, 30 to 42% huge hike. 
but the total while we are taking total uh, transfer to the state government with compared to the gdp it is reduced by 0.3 percentage this is budget estimate these yojana aisi hain finance minister arun jaitley however assured that net transfer to all states will go up compared to net transfers under the 13th finance commission single state willing to go back to the 13th finance commission formulation no i am not sir Because but every then the state i'll give you the figures including your state every state is earning thousands of crores more not hundreds thousands there is not a single state which is willing to go back to 13th finance commission so don't say 13th gave us more the issue kept resonating in the states as well on the 25th of march tamil nadu chief minister o panir selvam expressed his anguish while presenting his state's budget he said tamil nadu has been unfairly treated by the 14th finance commission with a drastic cut in the horizontal share from 4.969% to 4.023% of the general shareable tax pool and from 5.047% to 4.104% of the service tax pool He said a state like Tamil Nadu that invested heavily in resources that it mobilized by taxing its people and using borrowed funds to accelerate economic growth was badly let down. The very next day on the 26th of March, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar met Prime Minister Modi in Delhi to discuss the funding issues for Bihar. Bihar ko isse koi fayda nahi ho raha hai. बल्कि कई प्रकार के योजना के मद में जो सहायता मिलती थी अब वो बंद हो गई तो उसके चलते जो कुछ बढ़ा उससे ज्यादा घट गया तो कुल मिलाकर बिहार को नुकसान हुआ है एंड इन द बजट एज वी नो फॉर द टू ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स बिहार एंड वेस्ट बेंगाल ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड क्रोर इच इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्पेशल uh assistance have been provided out of the budget now that the uh, uh, in the finance commission west bengal which has a revenue deficit problem uh, has has been given a special grant to help it bridge the revenue deficit the commission however justifies its decision citing the changed economic situation of the states it's inevitable that some states will lose some states will gain but what we have to look at is what our recommendation is ensured is that public expenditure compared to national average in every state there should be no state which spends below 80% per capita so that has been ensured in this commission the reduction of the tax share for the nine states is not the only contentious issue In its award the commission also recommended a total grant in aid of 5.37 lakh crore this is divided into three categories post devolution revenue deficit of nearly 1.95 lakh crore to 11 states assistance of 2.87 lakh crore to local democratic bodies like village panchayats and municipalities and 55000 crore for disaster management Unlike the grant in aid for revenue deficit given only to 11 states, all states will get assistance to local bodies of state governments and assistance for disaster relief. The 1.95 lakh crore grant in aid for 11 states to meet revenue deficits over the next 5 years has further divided states. A recipient like Kerala that has done well on the Human Development Index will get a grant in aid of over 9500 crore in the next 3 years. the revenue deficit uh, states uh, i mentioned regarding kerala i don't know what are the experiences in other states what are the reasons for making this type of huge revenue deficit the revenue deficit is an alarming situation but uh, our perspective is different but this is a one time thing for clearing the deficit that is a good move because uh, lack of money they could not spend more uh, on this service sector social securities and that is why they are facing this revenue deficit this one time uh, thing to clear the deficit of these states that is a good move overall seven states andhra pradesh himachal pradesh jammu and kashmir manipur mizoram nagaland and tripura will get this grant for revenue deficit throughout 2020 Four states Assam, Kerala, Meghalaya and West Bengal will need revenue deficit assistance for one or more years in this period. The commission agrees with the fact that states have shown better fiscal discipline than the center in the past decade. 
it also calls for empowerment of local bodies by giving more funds to the states. The Commission earmarked 2.88 lakh crore for local bodies and municipalities of state governments. Our Finance Commission took the view is that we, we are required to support the state government with money to enable them to support the local bodies. So we have to give the money. The, there has been an increase over what was allocated last year. That has been given. The Commission further recommended that each state should spend this money according to its specific laws governing the local bodies. The spirit of the local bodies is that they should govern by themselves. If you start suspecting that they don't have capacities, they can't implement, then you cannot have a local self-government. So therefore, we leave it to the state governments to uh, take care of the aspect of strengthening. But what we have done, however, is that there should be no conditionality from the state government. Second, the local bodies should spend the money on the activities that they are supposed to spend under that respective legislation. Each state government has a law governing the local bodies. They should spend only on their job and not on somebody else's job. While demanding more money for local bodies, states urge the centre to assist them in strengthening these bodies. This existing bureaucratic system is a huddle. They should give more powers to the uh, elected bodies. In district panjait is there, but the district collector is the most of the uh, decisive authority. There, there was a proposal that the district collector should be the secretary of the district panjait. Then the district panjait can evaluate what are the things and they, uh, they will get more freedom to uh, fix the criteria for utilization of funds. Then one thing I already mentioned, the central government criteria should be revisited. This bureaucratic structure should be restructured and these democratic bodies should give more powers to proper utilization of the funds available to them. The states also resent the provisions to surrender unutilized money to the centre that's allotted to these local bodies. It is our experience that in, at, some, at times the fund allocated for a particular project uh, for the panchayats or the local bodies, these are not utilised properly and since the central government is not getting utilisation certificate on time, the next phase of fund is not forthcoming. So this is a problem, perennial problem. And new institutional arrangements should be made so that proper monitoring is done from time to time and, and to ensure that not a single paisa goes back to the kitty of the central government which has been allocated for the development of the rural areas or the urban areas through the local bodies. States also point out the rising tendency of successive central governments to collect more money by way of surcharge or cess despite the fact that no constitutional provision allows them to demand a share in it. If it is a tax, yes, the state government should get a share from this tax pool. If it is cess, there is no provision in the constitution to get a share to the states. If it is a new term without the, 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 other than the tax, then there is no possibility for the state governments to get a share. Now they are trying to impose this type of cess in every sector instead of the taxes. That means the everything is come to the central government, its own account, not to the state government. The share of cess and surcharges in gross tax revenue of the union government has increased from 7.53% in 2000, 2001 to 13.14% in 2013 14. So, the share of the central government, I mean, uh, the share of cess and surcharges in gross tax revenue of the union government has been doubled during the past few years. The Finance Commission concurs with the states on this. Previous Finance Commissions also have flagged this issue. They have recommended that the constitution should be amended to include cesses and surcharges in the divisible pool. Constitution has not been amended, that is a fact. So this fact also we have recognised. These controversies apart, the quantum of total transfers to states by way of devolution of taxes and other central assistance has also assumed importance. In its report, the Commission estimates the share of grants and tax devolution to states in terms of gross revenue receipts will increase from 47.5% in 2014-15 to 49.4% in 2019-20. The report also estimates that an equivalent share of states as a percentage of divisible pool is set to increase 2% from 61.9% to 63.9%.
overall as i explained overall in terms of aggregate fiscal transfers from the uh, fiscal transfers uh, uh, out of the totality that will that will not change according to our assumptions it is, our assumptions indicate that the transfers on account uh, under finance commission will increase as a percentage of the divisible pool which means that the transfers outside the finance commission from the central to states may decrease in order to maintain the union fiscal space Although some states like Tamil Nadu have expressed their disquiet over the 14th Finance Commission recommendations, several opposition states do support them since they do grant more autonomy. I must say that it's a new direction, it's a new step and we welcome this step, but the government, central government must consider uh the plight of the some of the states which are lagging behind. and there the intervention of the central government is a must the finance commission has done its job as per its terms of reference and uh, it has come out with uh, what i would say is a fair formula of distributing first of all distributing uh, transfer of resources from the center to the states and then distributing that money uh, or those resources among the states In its report the commission has tried to protect the interests of both the central and states. It has also tried to strike a fine balance between competing demand of several states. Given India's federal system and multi-layer tax structure, it's not easy to divide the tax pie. The commission says that its recommendation will lead to more economic activity at state level. Thanks for watching this special report. Keep watching Rajya Sabha Television.